Greetings, it's me again. We're back at it with making the world's hardest blink example in Arduino. And also I'm gonna not type as loud. Okay, uh, last time where we left off, we used some weird variables or what look like variables called DDRB to set the output or input mode and port B to set the output status like on or off of the pin. Um, and we also used some really ugly for loop to replace our delays. Uh, but we're going to take this a step farther and try to figure out where all of this comes from because these things highlighted in red are still technically Arduino and we're going to ignore all of that and do it ourselves. So last time I talked about this data memory section and how uh, each variable has some location in memory. So what we're going to do is instead of using the built-in port B and DDRB uh, names, we're going to reference that place in memory ourselves. So jumping back to the exact same part of the data sheet that we looked at in the last video, uh, we can see on the left hand side that they also give us these uh, hex values, which are where they live in memory. Uh, if you take a peek at what that looks like, you can see that that first one for port B here says that it's at memory address 0x25. And if we go back, we can see that that falls within this range here. So I guess that means that port B is technically one of the 64 IO registers. Uh, likewise, DDRB is uh, hexadecimal 24, pin B is uh, hexadecimal 23, and so on. So what we're trying to do is blink an LED. We want to turn pin 13 on. So our goal is to find that chunk of memory and write the value 32 to that. And 32 was a binary number that will result in pin 13 turning on. All right, well, that's cool, but how do we write that in code? So in order to understand this, you kind of need to know C a little bit more and how pointers work. So if we have a variable called Mitch, which is equal to 74, uh, the goal for this is to be able to change that variable without just typing in Mitch equals 55 or something like that. Our goal is to change it through a memory address only. So we have int Mitch equals 74, which goes into memory and it creates enough room to store the number 74. Uh, one of the things that you can do though is you can create this int pointer by int star here which means that we are going to have a pointer to a location in memory that holds an integer. Uh, we can call this something whatever we want. I'm calling it pointer to Mitch here. And the way that you can get the address of an existing variable is by sticking this ampersand in front of it. So and the and Mitch will give us the address of this variable in memory. That's cool, but it's the opposite of what we want to do. Our goal is to, given the address, we want to change the variable. However, if we have that, if we have the address, uh, we can change the value by doing this. And what this little star pointer to Mitch does is it's called dereferencing it. So it says, I understand that this is a pointer in memory, but I am going to set the very specific chunk of memory, the, the actual data of that, to 55. So typing in star pointer to Mitch equals 55 would be the exact same as typing in Mitch equals 55. So we've officially succeeded in setting the variable of Mitch without typing in the variable Mitch. So let's take that concept and use it for registers here. So we know that the address location is 25. In the previous example, we used the ampersand to figure out where the value of the variable Mitch lived. But in our case here, we know that it's at hexadecimal 0x25. Uh, also, the data that we're going to, we're not pointing to an integer this time, we're pointing to a byte because that register had eight bits to it. So we create a byte pointer. Uh, we give it a name. We can call it direction register B if we want to. Um, and that's going to be equal to 0x25. So if we want to set that now, we just do the exact same thing. We dereference that variable name and set that equal to 32. So now address location 25 in hex will now hold a value of 32. Cool. So we're all set with that. Uh, there is one little catch that you need to do, though. Uh, and this is something I found out afterwards. 
you need to put this volatile word in front of it. It's something that I've never used before until I started working with microcontrollers. And what that does is it helps out with the compiler because the compiler tries to read our code. It tries to figure out stuff that does nothing. And if it thinks it does nothing, it just completely ignores it and doesn't even put it in. Uh, the problem with that is reading this line of code here, we're s essentially setting a variable. So it sees that we're setting a variable. So then it looks through the rest of the code and it says, did you ever use this variable anywhere? And it sees that we never read from it. We never look at it. So it says that this is a useless variable and we don't even need to set it because we don't even use it later on. However, if you put this volatile keyword in front of it, that tells the compiler to listen to whatever we're saying. If we are writing to it, it tells it to trust us and to write to it no matter what. So it kind of overrides the compiler optimization to make sure we don't get rid of it. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So as reference, I'm gonna jump back a few slides here to make sure that I've got this correct. Um, port B lives at memory address 25. So let's go ahead and do that with our Arduino code. Uh, so instead of having port B equals 32 right here, we're gonna create a variable above it. And we'll try to type softly here. Um, we have a volatile, volatile byte pointer because it's pointing to a byte in memory and we're going to call this Mitch just to be easy and we're going to set that equal to 0x25 so 25 in hex so this pointer now has a value of 25 so that tells us where in memory it's supposed to go so now if we want to set the data of register 25 we just have to type in star Mitch equals 32. So that will do the exact same thing as right here where we've got port B equals 32. Now we have star Mitch equals 32. Uh, we're going to copy that exact same idea for this part down here. So instead of port B equals 0, we're going to say star Mitch equals 0. Set the value of Mitch from the pointer, Mitch is a pointer, to memory location 25. Set that equal to 0. Uh, likewise, we're going to do that for these as well, just so we're not using port B anywhere. Star Mitch and star Mitch. I promise I'm typing really quiet. I don't know if it's super loud. So let's compile that and give that a run. So compile, it's uploading and blinking, and there we go, it's still running. If you're curious, if I were to get rid of that volatile keyword and try to compile it like this, this is what happens. That LED just stays at its default state. In this case, it's off. It's completely ignoring all of my code because it just sees that we're setting a variable, but we're never actually using that variable anywhere else. So it just optimizes that code out completely. I will save that and upload it one more time. OK, cool. Jump back to where we left off. All right, so that's one way to do it, and I explained it that way because that's how pointers make sense, but that's not how people program microcontrollers. They want them to be a one-liner, and if I showed you this line right here off the bat, uh, you'd think I'm insane. However, what we're doing here is exactly the same as what we did in the previous step. We're just kind of condensing it all into one step. So to look at this, we start off with this memory address 25 here in red, and we then cast it to a volatile byte pointer, which is the exact same as creating that variable called Mitch. Uh, so now we've got this volatile byte, volatile byte pointer with a value of 25, and then we immediately dereference it by using this asterisk on the outside, which then will set the actual data of that address equal to 32. So this should be pretty quick. We're gonna go ahead and change that as well. We're going to get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. We're going to get rid of this part where it says Mitch, and we're going to do that really ugly looking thing where we have volatile byte pointer of 0x25. So now we have that really ugly thing where we specify memory address 25, we cast it to a volatile byte, dereference it, and set it equal to 32 all in one go. Uh, and this will make sense as to why we're doing this in a bit. So let's go ahead and replace all of our star Mitches with this massive chunk of code here. Now we are very difficult to read. And we'll upload that as well. 
And we can see our LED is still blinking. We didn't break anything yet. So that is extremely unreadable. And for everything that we've been doing, we've been making this blink code harder and harder to read. But for the first time, we're actually going to make it slightly easier to read. So if you've ever worked with preprocessor stuff with C, you are probably familiar with this define statement. And what define does is it lets us create a macro uh, where we can type in something like Mitch port B, and then anywhere in code where we type in Mitch port B exactly like this, it will cut that chunk out and replace it with whatever comes after it, such as this star, volatile byte, 25, so on and so forth. So this allows us to kind of make our code look a little bit cleaner and it almost makes it look like it's a variable. So let's go ahead and do this as well. So what we're going to do is you usually put these at the top. That's just uh, standard where everybody puts it. You type in define and then we'll call this Mitch B. Uh, and now you don't type in equals because it's not a variable. You just do a space and then whatever it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to copy paste this right here. So now anywhere that we type in Mitch B, it will literally, pre the preprocessor will come in and literally copy paste this to replace anywhere that says Mitch B. So now that makes it really convenient because we can type in Mitch B in all of these locations. And the reason I'm using Mitch B is because I don't want to use port B because port B is already defined by Arduino and I really want to prove to you that we're doing this on our own and we're not relying on them. So now this code's a little bit more readable. We've got Mitch B equals 32, Mitch B equals 32, Mitch B is zero, and Mitch B is zero. Uh, so the preprocessor pre will literally come in, search for Mitch B, like here, and it will copy this chunk to there. And we already saw that that works. So let's compile this. And look, our LED is still blinking. Cool. So that is how uh, port B and uh, DDRB are set. You'll see these a lot when you're working with some low-level microcontrollers. Uh, it's a big red flag, or a big flag, I should say, for me, where I see that and I see, oh, this is going to manipulate memory address 25. Something that I would have thought was crazy before. So to wrap this up, we're going to do the exact same thing for the direction register, which was previously DDRB. Uh, going back to that screenshot in the data sheet, we can see that the memory location for the DDRB is at 24 in hex. Um, also, please note that this was in my screenshot before I remembered to add the volatile keyword. That is extremely important. So let's go ahead and add this code as well. So we'll do define uh, Mitch Dur B, Derby. Uh, and that's going to be the exact same thing as this. The only difference is we're going to go to memory address 24. And I just space them out like this for it to look pretty. So now we can we have this DDRB, which is set by our Arduino. Instead of using that, we're going to ditch it and go to Mitch Derb. And there we go. And just to make sure it works, let's go ahead and compile. And our LED is still blinking. All right, well, that wraps this up. We have now made a very complicated set of code to do a very simple thing. The nice thing is, for the most part, we're not using any Arduino code library stuff. The only exception to that is that we're still using setup and loop. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that because it's pretty simple to understand how you could merge those two together. So that is everything. Uh, if there's something that I missed or something that you want me to touch up on, as usual, let me know. Uh, up next, we will start ditching the Arduino bootloader completely and we'll start flashing the microcontroller directly in the exact same way that it tells us to in the data sheet. It will program it how the data sheet tells us to. So until then, see you later.